For our next technique, we are looking at a process of flogging. Uh, flogging has a lot of different um, meanings when it comes to theater. Uh, flogging is typically when you take, it's a, a take any sort of a stick and apply fabric to it in sort of a uh, loose stringy approach and it allows you for uh, the ability to um, either, either paint with it, creating very streaky looking linear strokes um, or you can do it dry and it's a good, a good tool in order to beat your fabric to get uh, things like the charcoal or the dust from drawings when you've done your earlier drawings to help remove it almost acts sort of like an eraser. So um, a shop built flogger in this case um, is usually built with either a paint stick or a piece of stick. In this case, we're gonna make a tiny, a very small representative of a, of a flogging tool, okay? So what I have here is I've got an old paintbrush, just like the ones that I distributed. Get a paintbrush, I have some tape, uh, I'm just using painter's tape for this. If I was doing this in the shop, I might use electrical tape or uh, I'm even gaff tape, even though gaff tape tends to fall apart once it gets wet too much. Uh, I have an old rag here. I'm going to cut this up. So if you find a piece of fabric, uh, old t-shirt fabric, an old uh, dish towel, something you don't mind cutting up a little bit, that's for this. I have my tray. I went ahead and mixed uh, just a little bit of my red. I want to use red on this particular uh, sample. If we go back to our paper, you know, earlier what we did was we did a scumble over our entire page so that we have, have it pre-based with a scenic technique. So again, we have our either do a wet blend or choose the scumble. I've chosen a scumble technique on mine, okay? So to start this, I'm going to use just a regular paintbrush. If you have a stick or anything else, you can use that. I'm going to take uh, this piece of fabric. And normally I would use probably all this width. Um, I would like a piece of fab fabric about a foot to even a foot and a half long. Uh, in the case of our little flogger, I'm going to do this only about six inches. I don't need it that long. So I'm going to cut this, this old towel here in half. Um, we keep lots of old towels to use in the, in the scene shop for uh, painting uh, any kind of cleanups or tape uh, creating uh, tools like this. So, so first of all, just cut this in half. Let's see, one, two, I'm gonna roll it just a hair. All right, I'm gonna cut this about three quarters again. So what I have now, and I've got this big thing on the end, the seam, I'm gonna cut that off as well. So I just have just a piece of fabric, all right? So if I look at this, um, this is about six inches, maybe a little longer, six, seven inches. And it's about nine inches wide, eight, nine inches. Doesn't really matter. Those dimensions don't matter. I just need something that is smaller than a sheet of paper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to cut strips, but I'm not going to cut it all the way up. I'm, I'm going to cut it about uh, seven eighths up. I'm going to leave it all attached at the top. So I'm going to start at the bottom here. So you can see. And I'm going to cut strips. Now, it doesn't matter really how wide. Um, I typically do about three quarter inch wide. All right, so I'm going to do that one. Go to this one. I'm going to make my way across this piece of fabric. Just want to make it clear that I'm not cutting all the way. See, I've let it still connected to the top. All right, so we want you know, a dozen or so. If You can even vary these. If you want one thinner, one wider, uh, that's fine. You might get a little bit different effect. All right, so we're gonna keep working our way around. Try to keep in straight line, right? Don't go sideways or anything. I think I got a little crooked there, but that's all right.
All right, so basically it looks like a little hula skirt kind of um, thing. So what I'm gonna do is on my little paintbrush, where did I put that? Um, take this paintbrush here, and I'm gonna just kind of tape it on first. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll use staples. I'll literally just staple it on. Uh, for our exercise here, we're going to just use uh, tape just to kind of keep it secured. This is temporary. And a shop built one, we're thinking uh, we want longevity. We'll use this for a long time. Sometimes we'll have uh, two or three good uh, shop bloggers that are always ready for either paint or for using in uh, charcoal and erasing. So I'm just, and for the purpose of this, normally I would staple each of these as I did a turn. So you can see I'm wrapping, I'm wrapping the bottom of this. So I kind of roll it, tape it, roll it. I'm gonna tape it, roll it, kind of keep it even up there, just tape it. I said normally I would staple this or I might even glue it. I actually add, apply glue here and I glue it to itself to uh, create a nice solid connection at the top. Or a little makeshift one, this is fine. And let's see the last one. To finish this off, I'm gonna take my tape and I'm gonna wrap up and create a tape ferrule. Ferrule is this usually the metal part of a paintbrush, this part here. Uh, and I'm just going to make a tape one for now. Like I said, normally I would do this with electrical tape or friction tape, something that um, will stick to itself and kind of adhere to itself. All right, so I'll just wrap that up a bit so it doesn't come off. When you're done, you'll have a handle. You have something you can hold on to here, and you'll have a nice little. Uh, it's, it's a, like a, a fabric brush, brush, a paintbrush. Okay. So when we're using this on stage, if I've drawn, I don't have charcoal with me, but if I've drawn with charcoal, um, I can, if I'm finished or if I don't like my line, say my line, I need to move over to another place, I can take my flogger and beat that particular line and it helps remove all the charcoal dust and that way the charcoal dust almost acts like an eraser. This acts like an eraser. Another way I can use the flogger if I wanted a painting flogger is I make, I have a fabric like this. I dip this in the paint. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna dip this in. Now mind you, I should probably wet this a little bit. Get it wet, wring it out, wring out the excess paint, excess water, I should say. And that helps whenever you put it in your paint to kind of soak up uh, your, your uh, into the fibers of the paint. So in this case, I'm going to kind of get this saturated best I can. Okay, so I've got some paint on here, and what I can do is I can kind of drag this across my a little bit more saturated. That's my problem right now. I can kind of saturate this up and I can drag this across my paint. You get sort of, uh, you can either also, you can tap it, kind of get little wispy marks, you know. A little bit too much paint in there, but that's okay. I can add other colors. Let's say I want to go with a different color. Normally I would have a different flogger for each color, but for our exercise, this is fine. So I'm gonna add sort of a yellow on top of this. As I take it, I can kind of Okay, you'll see I get these little marks. They're very kind of um, 
wispy looking. The thicker the paint, the more uh, streaky it'll look. It won't look so soft. So like I'm going straight paint here. See what happens if I go with a darker color. In this case, we'll add some burnt umber, kind of one of our base colors. We'll just put on top to get some more contrast. We've got, you know, some nice things happening here with the, the red and the yellow. Like that. It almost has sort of a marbling effect, very soft marble effect happening here. Let's see, I'm going more of that yellow. I like that. I'm using um, a yellow ochre. It's one of my favorite colors. Um, you do. I don't believe I gave that in your kits. But if you wanted to add to your paint collection, you could always add uh, yellow ochre. It's a very nice earthy yellow. Right, so. I went much thicker. You can dab it, you can pull it, you can drag it. And you get these kind of wispy kind of effects going on. All right. You kind of see what we're doing. All right. So create your homemade flogger. You see, I've got lots of colors going on this. This particular fabric is just a open weave kind of a, a, a kitchen towel that I had. You might find that you get a little different effect by using something else, something a little more um, clothes weave like uh, often we make these with muslin uh, which is a very lightweight um, canvas type material very lightweight um, uh, you know muslin comes in a couple of different weights but it's a very lightweight cotton material so in this case i'm using a kitchen towel so i'm getting this effect a muslin may have a little bit different effect for you so all right so that concludes this particular exercise go ahead and try this um, you'll find that this is often used um, for a base paint for uh, doing marbles. Uh, we also do this for any kind of a linear texture. If you're if we're doing anything on stage that the paint needs to look like a very linear looking uh, um, uh, type of material. I've used this to create grasses. You could wisp in one direction. It looks very much like grass. Um, I've used this in skies to create very wispy clouds. So I'm using whites and grays and blues as my color combination. And by creating that flogging on top of a uh, wet blended sky colors, um, I can create very wispy clouds. So you can do a lot of different things with this particular technique. All right, so experiment with that and we will see you on the next one.